Hey everyone, it's Delaney, Inbound Marketing Specialist at Hive House Digital. Today, I'm going to show you how to create NPS surveys in HubSpot. An NPS survey, or Net Promoter Score survey, measures customer loyalty to your company. Based on a score of 1 to 10, NPS surveys break your customers down between promoters, passives, and detractors. Now, let's show you how you can do this survey in HubSpot. You will need a service hub in order to do this. Once you're in HubSpot, go to Service and click on Feedback Surveys from the drop-down menu. Then click the orange Create Survey button. From here, you have several different options for surveys. You're going to want to scroll down to the bottom and choose Customer Loyalty to do an NPS survey. Once you make your choice, you can go ahead and click Next. Then choose your delivery method. You can either do an email or a web page. You'll probably want to do email, that way you can just send it to them directly rather than having to send a link out to your customers whenever you want them to fill out the web page. So I'm going to go ahead and choose email and click create. Now you can set up your NPS survey. First, I'm going to go ahead and name it. So for this, I'll just say tech tip NPS. Then on the left sidebar is where you can do all of your changes. So you have your survey language, your company name. We're in our demo portal, so it still has our old company name, so I'm going to change that to Hive House Digital. The from name can be either your company name or maybe you have someone from within the company you want the email to come from. So say, for example, you want it to come from your president, you can go ahead and choose him from the drop-down menu, and it will come from the president, which in our case is Chris. Then you can choose the from address, so you'll probably want to change this, so just look for the email that you need it to send from. And then you have the subject line. So this is the default. Hey, how are we doing? If you want that to be more in line with your company uh, voice and tone, go ahead and change that. You can also click on advanced settings. And if you have more than one office location, you can choose that. But we just have one, so we're going to go with the default. Then you can click on email body. And that is going to help you customize the body of the email. So you kind of have two sections. You've got the kind of like intro portion and then the survey portion. So you can customize the greeting. The default is, hey, first name, your opinion matters. You can go ahead and change that if you want it to say something different. For example, you could say, hey, first name, we want to hear from you. And then the NPS question. Now, this is something you cannot update. You cannot change the language for this. It is an industry standard survey question. And so HubSpot does not let you modify it. Next, you can go to the last dropdown for theme, and you can update the featured image. So the default is just this kind of megaphone picture, but if you want to change it, let's say you want to click replace and have it be sent with your logo, you can go ahead and do that too. You also have your colors and your alt text you can adjust if you need to. Next, you can click the feedback tab. And this is for setting up your follow-up question. So depending on the score that they choose, a follow-up question will show up. So for detractors, that would be zero to six. So they are people who are not going to advocate for your brand. They were very unhappy for one reason or another. You have the default question of, can you tell us more about your experience so we can get it right the next time? Go ahead and change that if you wish. Then you have passive, and that is, can you tell us more about your experience so we can do even better next time? So passives are people who didn't hate their experience working with you, but they also will not go around suggesting your brand to their peers or their friends. Uh, they just kind of had a neutral experience with you. Then you have promoters, and they're people who love your brand, love working with you, had a really, really positive experience. The default follow-up question for this is, can you tell us why you scored so highly? So if you want to change any of those follow-up questions, you are, you are free to do so here. The next tab is thank you. So this is what shows up after they submit the follow-up question, and you can customize this, again, based on their NPS score that they chose. So you can choose from detractors, and then, of course, you have the default text that you can always change, your passives, and then your promoter. So if you want to keep the default, you can. Otherwise, I would suggest that you update this to be more in line with your company branding. Next, we have recipients. And so the default is it became a customer date more than 30 days ago. So once a contact converts to a customer in HubSpot, it will wait 30 days and then send the NPS survey. 
You can also choose to start from scratch. So you can use various different company contact deal properties to um, create the survey criteria. So this could be for a variety of different things, but maybe you have different lines of business and you want this NPS survey to go to customers who are part of one line of business. If you have a list, you can also use static lists. So you can have it just go to one list and uh, those are the people who will get it. It won't be kind of a more dynamic list. If you scroll down, you can set up the frequency. So you can have this set as reoccurring. The recommended amount is every three months, but you could do from every month all the way up to once a year. It's up to you. You can also choose to just have this be a one-off survey, so it'll only be sent once. And finally, you've got your automation. So you have the notification to set up Slack notifications. So if you use Slack for your company, you can set up notifications whenever you get a submission. So you can also choose who gets notified about new survey responses. So maybe you want the account managers to get every single NPS survey. You can go ahead and find your account managers and go ahead and select them. And then once a survey has been submitted, they will be notified. You can also choose to send a survey reminder email. So the recommended amount is two days. If you choose to do that, you can just go ahead and click that blue toggle to turn this on. And lastly, you have automating follow-up action. So if you want to send an email to a customer after they send a survey response, you can do so here. And you can do that based on if they are a detractor, passive, or promoter. And that is everything. So all you have to go ahead and do is click review and publish. All right. So once you've published your survey and people are starting to fill it out, you can go to the main feedback surveys area to further see the details of the responses. So on the dashboard, you'll have the different survey names, the survey types, the overall ratings, how many have been surveyed, how many responses, when it was last edited, when it was published, when it was created. So you can go ahead and click on the name to open up the details. And you'll see I ended up filling out this feedback survey just as an example to show you. So you'll see all of the responses as a default, but you can also choose between detractors, passives, and promoters here. You can also do a search and choose by date range. To view more details on someone's response, you can go ahead and hover over their name and click view response. Then you'll have a summary. So you'll have what they scored you and what they answered to your follow-up question. And then you can also toggle over and find their contact information if you wanna to go to their contact record. You can also click on the analyze tab to see the summary of your survey overall. So it'll have the total number sent, delivered, opened, responded, and responses with comments. You'll also be able to see a pie chart of how your customers are feeling. So whether the majority of them are promoters, passives, or detractors, you'll also get your full NPS score. So that'll be how many promoters minus the detractors. And then if you scroll down, you can see the chart over time. So obviously there's only been one answer. I just published the survey, but over time, it'll show the growth or decline of your MPS score over time. So this is a great dashboard to come and visit to just keep an overall pulse on where your MPS score is at. So it's a pretty simple survey to set up and a pretty simple dashboard already set up for you. So you can just view all the responses in one place. That is all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next tech tip.